That's a lot of spirit of Dubai. Smells like teen Dubai spirit. Hey friends, Ash here. Welcome back to Extra Gen Sense. Hope that you're doing well. Uh, as you can see here, we got a haul of the spirit of Dubai fragrances. Actually, this has been in the works for a couple months, picking these up and uh, got most of the ones from the first generation. So I figured let's go ahead and you know start talking about these. <laughs> and there's a lot to talk about. Now these are not inexpensive. These run about 275 bucks at full retail. And these aren't even their like highest end fragrances. Spirit of Dubai has some stuff that is far above these. Uh, and you can find these along with those higher end ones at maxaroma.com. And I'll have these linked in the description as well. And Max Aroma has a, a ton of stuff other than this, of course, niche fragrances, indie fragrances, designer fragrances. And if you shop there, you should use my codes. I got two of them. First one, which is the code you should probably try out first is gents. 20, which will get you 20% off your order. That's good for most things on the website, but there are some fragrances that that code doesn't work for. So if that code doesn't work, you can use the code GENTS10 for 10% off. So yeah, try the other one first, GENTS20. Like I said, I've been collecting these Spirit of Dubai bad boys right here. So we're gonna run through these real quickly, kind of a brief overview of each one of these scents here. Uh, we're gonna start by taking a look though at how the presentation. I'm gonna show you the box for this first one. Uh, it's it's pretty much the same the whole way down. So I don't wanna you know show you the box for each one and be like, look, a different color. So we'll just take a look at uh, this first one and then you can use your mind to imagine this, but in different. So here we have the front of the box. You have the concentration name of the fragrance in Dubai right there on the front. Got the Spirit of Dubai logo up top. The ingredients on the back along with your badge code and barcode. It opens up like so. And when you first get these in, there's actually a little piece of plastic that sits over top. You basically just take that and toss it. You have a little cutout right here where your bottle sits inside. And then this right here, you can just open it up. There's a little booklet in there that basically shows you each one of the different fragrances from the house. So there's the box. It's uh, it's pretty nice. It's nothing like crazy ostentatious or anything like that, but uh, it's decent enough. Really though, the presentation is more so about the bottles. So they have these little uh, cases that each one of the bottles sits inside of. It says the spirit of Dubai on the back. It opens up like so and it has a magnetic closure to it which is really nice. And you just pop the bottle out there so it's like additional protection for your bottle. As you can see each one has a different color scheme dependent on the fragrance. And then the bottles themselves which I'll show you uh, closer up each one as we kind of work through them has a really cool little design that goes around uh, the midpoint of the bottle. So it really helps set each one of these off and gives them kind of their own identity. And then the cap is really heavy as well. Really nice. Clicks into place you can hear right there. And then you have the Spirit of Dubai logo up top, surrounded by crystal. So overall, the presentation I feel like of these has a premium look, a premium feel to it. It's heavy in the hand, feels nice, looks nice. A little kind of leatherette type case is good as well. But none of that matters if the fragrance is no good. So we're gonna work through each of these and I'll tell you what I think about them. Uh, do I wanna start left to right or right to left? I'll start right to left. All right, so the first one that we'll talk about is this one here in green. And this is most likely the most popular popular, most well-known from Spirit of Dubai, and it's called Maidan. Really like the green coloration to it. The little horseshoe on the bottle is cool. Kind of a, an, another leather type wrap. Now, before I spray this and talk about the scent a little bit, I'm gonna give you the note breakdown for this one and just this one. And it'll make sense why when I give you this note breakdown. <laughs> Spirit of Dubai is full on unhinged when it comes to their note breakdowns. Now, I have complained, I have whined like a small baby that needs a bottle about fragrances that have only three notes, one in the top, one in the mid, one in the base. I don't really dig that. But Spirit of Dubai, they have taken it to another level, okay? Obviously, they are not fans of that either, and I give them all the props in the world for that. But check out this note break. Here we go. And keep in mind, each one of these has a note breakdown that is like top, saffron, lavender, bergamot, Cypress, nutmeg, cardamom, styrax, cinnamon, grapefruit, apple, artemisia, mid, oud, tobacco, geranium, cedar, cypress, labdanum, floral notes, cashmere, lily of the valley, jasmine, base, leather, patchouli, oud, gayak, sandalwood, amber, musk, vanilla, benzoin, tonka, and vetiver. So, yeah, they got a few notes. 
Jones. And like I said, each one of these is like that. Uh, Spirit of Dubai, more so than any other house probably, just loads you down with every possible note that you could want. But the problem with that is for a lot of people when they see a note breakdown that large and they smell the fragrance, they're like, I'm confused. I don't even, what is happening right now? What am I smelling? I don't even know. So it's one of those deals where <laughs> maybe there's a happy median. You don't need three, but you don't need 75 either. So just be aware when you look at these fragrances, when you look them up, those note breakdowns downs are gonna be busy. Now that said, this one right here is fire. There is a reason that people like this. There is a reason this is hype. There is a reason that people will pay out the nose for this fragrance right here. It is a leather scent, but it is an extremely well done one. The quality is fantastic. It's got a nice sweetness to it right off the top. That saffron really plays off the top of the fragrance and, and just lures you right in. And then of course you have oud in there, tobacco in there, making this a perfect scent for fall and winter time. Great during the evening, super sexy and classy. It's drawn like some comparisons to Halfetti from Pinhaligans, but this one is better for me. And it does have just all those notes coming through, but it's blended really well. So you're gonna get warm spices here. You're gonna get touches of florals. You're gonna get those woods, the tobacco, as I mentioned, the leather, an excellent fragrance, absolutely fantastic. So this right here, yes, it is the most hype of the house, but it's one you gotta know. This stuff is awesome. So up next, Next, in the white case and bottle, we have Bahar. Now, I know I said I wasn't gonna do this, but uh, I, I'm gonna do this. I just gotta I just gotta hit you with the, the top notes here. Understand there are a bunch of mid notes and base notes, but I gotta hit you with the top of this one, okay? C notes, citruses, ozonic notes, watery notes, bitter orange, spicy notes, lime, coconut, grapefruit, lemon, violet leaves, green notes, apple, cherry, pineapple, black currant, strawberry, ginger, mandarin orange, cardamom, plum, raspberry. What is not in there? Legitimately, <laughs> It's just like, hey, all the notes, all of them, make it work, make it happen. Now, this one also smells really, really good. It's not as masculine as this one is, but I would say it's still unisex leaning masculine, which after all those fruity notes in the top is, is probably a bit of a surprise because you may think that it's gonna come across just like a complete feminine bomb, but it doesn't. Super fresh off the top. It has a, a nice amount of sweetness from the fruits, but not overly so. And it doesn't come across like a um, candy or um, syrup or anything like that, thankfully. So this one comes across a great mix of almost white suede, soft woods in there, and then the white florals, fruity sweetness off the top, touch of powder, and then a nice kind of white musk vanilla in there also. And one thing I'll tell you, this one and that one both, beast, beast performance. This stuff lasts an eternity, projects heavily, so keep that in mind. After that, we have Rimal, which looks a little bit plainer than the others, doesn't it? That bottle? Yeah, this one has like a cool rubbery feel to it. That one's got the horseshoe, and this one's just Oh, it's like a little gold sticker. And this one also does not have quite as busy of a note breakdown as compared to the other two. This one has drawn some comparisons to uh, Kalamat Black from Arabian Oud. So if you're familiar with that one, a little bit similar. This one has more of a Middle Eastern tinge as compared to the last two. The way that the oudiness comes across here is a little bit more prominent, but then it has a good amount of sweetness in there to again, help alleviate any issues <laughs> that could present for some people. A whole bunch of saffron in there, caramel, so you have have, again, sweet, warm spices, and then more of a gourmandy sweetness kind of underneath the oud. So it's kind of like sandwiching that oud note. So this one really elegant, very sexy, again, amazing performance. And uh, this is going to be for somebody who wants a Middle Eastern oud scent without the funk, with a good amount of sweetness coming from both the top and base. And to keep it interesting, there is like a little elangling in there. So it's some of that, you know, yellow floral edge and uh, helps set this one apart even more. So all three of these really well done. So we're three for three and we move on to this one right here, Roya. And this is another one that has gotten uh, a good amount of love. My uh, little case is a little bit wonky on this one. It looks like it's seen better days. Kind of little, ah, I made it worse. Let's just let's spray it. Dig the sticker though. Now this one is very different from the three that have come before it. Very different indeed. This is the second one that I smelled from Spirit of Dubai. And it's interesting because I love it. And at the same time, I'm like, oh, when would I wear that? So when you spray this on, to me, 
it has a very antique smell to it. And when I say that, I don't mean a fragrance from 1920 or 1940 or anything like that. I mean, it smells like um, I can, uh, a building with old wood to, to an extent because it also has a freshness to it. But it, it reminds me of like that feeling of when you walk into a place, uh, a building, a house, whatever, and it has very old wood in it. And it has this very particular way that the air hits your lungs. But then again, like I said, this is a much fresher version of that. So it's uh, hard to describe. So you have cashmere in here, neroli, jasmine, good amount of jasmine. And that cashmere is gonna help give you that kind of fuzziness. And then the jasmine is what's really pushing this one home for me. Also has woody notes in there, oud. But uh, again, the oud here is not anything um, scary or barnyardy or anything like that. So it's this very intriguing scent profile of like fresh and yet antique slash old at the same time. As it dries down, it takes on more of a, a green freshness, very lively. Uh, it loses some of that like old housiness <laughs> that I really dig. So yeah, this is an interesting one where it's just kind of floral, woody, musky, fresh, but then with this interesting facet that keeps me coming back. Uh, but again, of these uh, first four, this is the one that I would wear the least as far as like when I'm gonna go out somewhere and see people, but it's like, it sounds so weird. Go out and see people. Now we move on to a brosh, which uh, I'm probably butchering that. I just like to say it that way because it makes me think of like, hey bro, hey brosh. So let's, let's blast it on. Give it a couple little sprays here. There we go. This one is really easy to wear. Like this is the type of scent that you would think of as niche quality, but with a very classy designer sensibility to it. This is a very smooth, woody scent, masculine, classy, as I said, easy to pull off, nice creaminess to it. The sweetness that's in here comes mainly from the uh, floral notes. Really smooth, elegant, creamy. It's not like bash you over the head, ultra synthetic. This is the type of scent you could pull off during the day, during the evening, spring, summer, fall, to the office, casually, it doesn't really matter. It's just a, a really easy wearing scent. It smells like, to me, I don't know, like, um, like a very, very high end take on something that Lalique might do and not like Ancre Noir Lalique, not like that. Although I'm not sure that Lalique has ever put anything out that has this sort of, uh, this of sweetness. So really, really, really good though. Now we have Majalis and this one has a really pretty sticker. <laughs> this actually, I think it might be the most aesthetically appealing one to me between the color of the cap and the, the design on it. And when I wrap everything up, I'll just do like a quick kind of rundown of which ones are my favorite to wear personally. All right, so with this one, we got another just beast, unchained beast, huge performance here. Gonna last forever, okay? You spray this on your skin, one, two times, you're gravy, you're good. It's another really, really, really busy note breakdown a lot of fruits in here, uh, has dates, has actually one of the more prominent notes in here, so you're gonna get a lot of that sweetness from the dates. Once again, a good amount of saffron, a lot of uh, woodiness in here as well, incense, honey, tobacco. This is gonna be one of those fragrances that cuts through the cold. You do not wear this in spring, you do not wear this in summer. This is just cool weather, cold weather only, at least for me. I mean, I'm sure some of you out there can roll with this during spring. During during summer, I guess. If you just take no prisoners, you just want to teach people who's boss, I guess you could, you could do that. And once again, with this one, uh, you have a, a little tinge of like a green undertone to it. You know, it gives it a little more life, I feel like, a little more depth, makes it more interesting. And I am a fan of that in general. So this is uh, one of my favorites of the bunch here, as far as just what I would reach for when it's cold outside. Still, this is my favorite. Now we're going all blacked out. Look at that, just like gaudy in your face with all these crystals. So how does it smell? Now this one is a little more interesting. So a number of these have had oud and they have had an oud note that by and large is, is content to just kind of hang out and, and play a little supporting role and not be too loud. With this one, the oud makes itself known a little bit more. It's uh, a little more prominent. You can actually pick it out when you first spray it on. And it does have a little touch of that uh, funk. <laughs> you know, I know some people are gonna say, ooh, gross, but it really does just make this one smell so much more elevated. It's not over overbearing, it's not overdone, but it's just a, just a little touch, a little animalic touch that makes it more intriguing, that really gets your attention. It has rose in there, a good amount of it actually, but again, the rose here, not overdone, thankfully, because I have smelled so many rose oud fragrances. It is so boring at this point. I don't care. <laughs> like it has to be really top level stuff for me to, to take notice, you know? And thankfully this one doesn't cross over into just being, oh, rose oud. Also have a good amount of dried fruits in there, 
fruit in general, spicy notes also, and it is once again just beast. <laughs> so strong, okay? You don't need very much of this at all. So even though this is pricey, it'll last. This stuff smells awesome. And we got the blue boy right here, Taroth. So um, let's see how the blue do. Man, I gotta be careful with these little cases. I'm gonna break them. Be careful with your cases. Opening it like a normal person. I'm gonna... Look at how much, is, look at this, look how much has been used already. It's absurd, this is absurd. So this one, if memory serves, was the third one. So it was like one, two, three. And uh, this one right here, it's, it's pretty good. So if you look at the note breakdown, um, a lot of the things that are in this one are also going on here. You know, you have your fruits, dried fruits, rose, food, but it's approached in a completely different way. So this one is much sweeter. It is less on that animalic side of things. It's got like a little, a little candy touch to it and even though it has like an incense smokiness it's not in your face really it's just playing along nicely with the other sweeter notes letting them steal the show but then making sure that everything doesn't go to kitty town and that one is a pretty good compliment puller also for what that's worth so uh, this just a great type of scent that has a really unique feel to it compared to most things out there, but is still pretty easy to wear. And again, just a monster, like one, a couple sprays, you're good. All right, last one, here it is. As y'all, as y'all, as y'all having a good time out there? Blast it on, here we go. Woo, man. Now I will tell you that out of everything here, this one is gonna have an opening that does not work for a good amount of people because the way the citrus hits here off the top is violent. It's uh, really an interesting citrus opening because it has a rindiness to it, right? But it's nothing like, um, for example, because most of you probably will be aware of this one, Light Blue Forever, Light Blue Italian Love, you know how like those have a really rindy kind of sour tart citrus opening? It's nothing like that. Oof, it's just, a big punch more bitter more bitter than than those for sure and then has like a c kind of accord in there like an oceanic accord that has almost a seaweediness to it so it's green aromatic but bitter and herbal and then has this citrus that is rindy without really having that offsetting kind of you know sweetness that can help alleviate some of those edges it, it doesn't have that then you have a bunch of florals in there as it dries down uh, jasmine being one of the more prominent ones it does have like a tin of an animalic feel to it also. So it's fresh and clean for the most part, but then it also has that little bit of a uh, funky edge. Of everything here, this one I think is the hardest to wear, I, I would say for more people. If the opening works for you, it's not gonna be as bad. But if that opening doesn't work for you, this is gonna be nearly unwearable. I think it's really interesting. I don't mind the opening, uh, but definitely not what I'm reaching for out of these. So for me, personal favorites, this one, awesome. Mm -hmm. Honestly, they're all really good other than this one, I think is, is well below all these other ones. Like I would put this in a separate tier underneath all these. I think that this one is uh, very intriguing to smell for me personally, but I would absolutely like pick these to wear over that one most of the time. Mm, I wanna move one more up into this section. So down. You hit me on a different day, you'll probably get a different lineup other than these three right here. As uh, my favorites, these three in the also really good tier. This one in the uh, kind of weird, but I love it tier. And this one in the, ah, mm, oh, mm, you tried tier. Well, there we go, the spirit of Dubai. Is it likely that I scoop up all the crazy expensive ones? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. But these are absolutely killer. Uh, yes, they are on the pricey side, but man, you get insane performance. Pretty much all of these. Like they have great projection, great longevity. Quality is there, the presentation is nice. And some of these are truly like top tier, these fragrances. So check them out if you ever get the chance. If nothing else, try to get your hand on some samples. Again, I'll have these linked in the description. Uh, they're all at Max Aroma. Gents 20, Gents 10 are the codes. Thank you guys for hanging with me. Stay safe out there. See you again another day.